Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we're trying a puzzle today that has had probably more recommendations in the last week than just about any puzzle we've ever seen. It's called Ascension. It's by Florian Wartman, and apparently it is absolutely brilliant. It is... Um, you can see it's a knight's move. Sorry, you can't see it's a knight's move Sudoku. I was going to say, you can see it's an arrow Sudoku, but it does have a knight's move condition. So we can't have the same digits uh, a single chess knight's move apart. And that is all the rules. Very short arrows. And apparently it is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Just two stars out of five for difficulty over on Logic Masters. So this is what I'm going to try for you today. Um, and... Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think if I've got any news. Hopefully you joined us for the stream last night. We had a ball again to Metsi. What a lot of fun that game is. Gets harder though, doesn't it, as, as we go through. Thank you very much if you managed to spend some time with us on stream last night. Um, in What other news did I want to mention? Um, I've got some birthdays to do. Oh yes, I was going to share a bit of poetry with you. Um, so I'm on... On Facebook, sometimes it, it seems to recommend poetry to me. Um, and sometimes I really am taken by what I read. And there's a poem that I think I have seen before, um, but not for a long t time, um, by Shel Silverstein, uh, called The Clock Man. And I thought I'd read it to you. It's quite poignant. It's only short, so forgive me. Um, How much will you pay for an extra day? The clockman asked the child. Not one penny, the answer came, for my days are as many as smiles. How much will you pay for an extra day, he asked when the child was grown. Maybe a dollar, or maybe less, for I've plenty of days of my own. How much will you pay for an extra day, he asked when the time came to die. All of the pearls in all of the seas, and all of the stars in the sky. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? It's good. It sort of resonates with me. I don't know if anyone else finds this, but uh, I've talked before on the channel about how it seems that time seems to fly at an ever-increasing rate as I age. Um, anyway, that, that stuck with me today. Now, I've got some birthdays to do. Let's let's move on to those. Um, we'll start off with Andrea, who has t turned 25 today, over there in New Jersey. Um, apparently, Andrea is abstaining from cake, but will be watching House MD on the television. Um, now, I have to confess, I really like House MD. Um, I'm a huge Hugh Laurie fan, actually. And... Um, that, that, that program, in fact, is responsible for slightly dampening uh, the hypochondria that has um, plagued my life from about the age of 18. Um, and I, yeah, I think, I think it's because so many things go wrong in such simple ways in that program that I sort of realised I had to stop worrying a little bit. Um, so, Andrea, anyway, that's nothing to do with your birthday i hope you have a great birthday today i'm sorry you'll be abstaining from cake and enjoy house um next george george it's your birthday today and i know this because your boyfriend andrew wrote in um and told us that you enjoy watching both sudokus and the wordle so we've got of course mark's wordle in a minute videos uh, which you can get both on the channel and on other forms of social media, Instagram, TikTok. Um, but George, thank you very much for watching. I I'm not sure whether you're a cake fan, but if you are, I hope it's heavily chocolatey. Um, and then finally, over there in Lakewood, Colorado, Kai, it's your birthday today. And I know this because Krista wrote in and said that you'd appreciate a shout out. So Kai, many, many happy returns. I hope you have a great birthday with large slices of cake, of course. And with that said and done, let us turn our attention to Ascension and see what Florian Wartman has in store for us. These are the rules. We've got normal Sudoku rules applying, so we've got to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, every column, and every three by three box. Identical digits cannot be a knight's move apart. So um, sometimes we state that a little bit more formally. We say cells separated by a knight's move in chess cannot contain the same digits. So imagine that 
uh, we're looking at the green cell. Now, if that was a chess knight, in one move it could jump to all of the orange squares, couldn't it? Or each of the orange squares. Therefore, none of these orange cells here could contain the green digit. Now, obviously, Sudoku is going to limit the positions that the green digit can go in as well. In fact, all of those squares, all of those yellow squares couldn't be contain a green digit. But in addition, in this puzzle, none of the orange cells could as well. So that is how the knight's move constraint works. And I think the arrows are normal. It says digits along an arrow sum to the digit in the corresponding circle. So I don't know. If this was a 2 and that was a 6, that would be an 8. 2 plus 6 equals 8. That's, how, that's all the rules. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And my first thought here is that this must be to do with... There must be some heavy geometric trickery going on. Because normally... Um, you know, you can rely on having at least one three cell arrow in a grid, but they, these are all two cells long. I mean, yeah, I see things like this going on. So this square here, where does that go in this box? Well, the answer to that is a little bit interesting. It obviously doesn't go in its own column and it can't go on its own arrow because imagine it did. What would the other digit on that arrow be? It would have to be zero. If this is, imagine this is 5. If that's 5 and that's 5, that would have to be 0. So it's not going on its own arrow. It's not going in its own column. By the knight's move, it's not going in those two squares. So it's going on an arrow, which means that this circle definitely is bigger than this one. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see what you're doing here, Florian. Hang on. How, how far back does this go, is the question. But it goes at least at least there. The, what I'm noticing is that, um, that this pattern with green is repeating. I could see that it was going to repeat here. So, for example, whatever this blue digit is, where does that go in box three? And it's exactly the same pattern and logic. It's got to go on a different arrow. So now, whatever this square is, let's make that red. Red is obviously greater than blue, which is also greater than green. But we can keep going with this, can't we? Because this, let's start there. That square definitely has to be on this arrow. This square now, which is definitely greater than yellow, Let's make this purple. We haven't used purple yet. Well, it's very remiss of me. That has to go on that arrow. So the maximum. Well, given that we know the minimum we could add to each of these arrows is one at a time. So if that was nine, eight, seven, six. So the maximum size of this is five. And the minimum size of it is three. It's three, four, or five. Um, so it's so, sort of a, a disjointed thermometer going through the grid. Three, four, or five. Four, five, or six. I mean, is it is that worth actually notating? It's looking like that. No, <laughs> I've got, got it. OK, right. That's really very clever. It is a sort of disjointed thermometer, but but it's more constrained than I'd realized. OK, well, let's. Let's look at box four. That is where we should look. And that is because. The, the, the point here is very, it's very cool actually. This has to be a six. And that is a little, it's a little bit weird as to why that has to be a six, but I will try and explain. It's because there are, this digit here, this purple digit, is definitely the sum of three different Sudoku digits. It cannot be expressed 
in less than three different Sudoku digits. And that is because these two digits here are effectively a proxy for yellow, aren't they? Which is on this on this arrow. So these two digits plus the digit that is not yellow on here sum up to this, this purple square. Now the minimum sum of three different Sudoku digits, which let's choose one, two, and three, they are the minimum Sudoku digits, is six. So this is six, this is seven, this is eight, this is nine. And now, now we're gonna get loads of ones everywhere because my, my assumption for my disjointed thermometer was that I was going to put one along with the, the digit on each thermometer. So we get, hang on, I might have to be careful now. I mean, hmm. I know that the digits one, two, and three are in here. Yes, that's interesting actually. This can't be a three. Because I know that the three digits, these, these digits here are made up of one, two, three, and yellow on this arrow. Now if yellow was three, this would be a one-two pair and this arrow would be double three, which clearly won't work from a Sudoku perspective. So this is four or five. I was going to say which means... What does that mean? <laughs> that, if, if it's four, this is one three. And this arrow is four two. Yes, okay, here's, here's, a, here's another way of really quickly appreciating that you can't put three on this arrow. If you do, it's definitely double three. Why do I do that by looking at that cell first? My brain is so weird. Um, okay, so, so let's think about this a different way. This is either, it's yellow plus one or two, but I don't know where yellow goes and the knight's move isn't really helping me. Ah, let's do it differently then. Let's look at this arrow, because that adds up to six and doesn't include a one. So that's got to be two, four. Ah, I see. This is beautiful. Right. Two is now definitely in one of these, as is four. Now look, they see that cell. If this was four, you couldn't put a four on this arrow and you couldn't make this six total work. It couldn't be one, five because of the one there and it couldn't be two, four. So that is five which means this is one five, um, because we know one of these is yellow. In fact, let's, let's re reinstate our, our coloring. Um, so this must be two, three. Yeah, that's lovely as well. Okay, this can't be two for the same reason these couldn't be four. If that's two, you can't put two here by Sudoku and you can't put two there by Knight's move. So that's three, that's two, that's two, that's four. Um, there's a two up here by, by in row four by Sudoku. Hang on, there must be loads we can do here. Oh, I see. Oh, please. Oh, that would be beautiful. I'm just wondering if that logic I just did with this cell is going to transplant itself here and then here because this four can't now appear on this arrow. So this can't be a three, four pair. It can't be a one, six pair. So this is a two, five pair. And we know the order by Sudoku using this too. Now five, it is, it's, oh goodness me. Okay. Okay, it's not just the break-in that's superb. That is superb. The way that keeps going round the grid and knocking out the options. Look, five can't be on this arrow now because of the knight's move and Sudoku. So this eight is not three, five, it's not one, seven. So this is two, six, and the two takes care of business. So six is now in one of those two squares. Nope, six is here by Sudoku. Can't be in this column because of the one, six pair. Um, so six is up there. Oh, I thought I was going to get seven in this box, but I don't quite get it. What are those squares then? Three, four, nine. Let me just look at that. Three, four, nine. Can we do anything with those? I mean, there are some str there are some strangenesses going on with that. For example, this square cannot be three, four, or nine now. 
because it sees all three of those by sort of virtue of Sudoku and Knight's move jiggery pokery. So this digit is five or seven, I think. Let me just double check that. Four, five, six. Yeah, it's only got two options. Um, well, nearly, nearly. Oh, that can't be two because of the two here. Right, what else could we do then? We could... Where should, where should we look now? Um, I don't know. Five is a little... Oh, no, five... Oh, no. That's that feels like the same logic I just did with the six. Yeah, so now now look, it's bouncing back again. I didn't didn't appreciate this at all. But the six is trapped in this box by a combination of this and this. The five is trapped in this box by a combination of this and this. It's the same sort of logic. So five is over there. And does that no it doesn't it doesn't continue with four because it just doesn't because we aren't continuing back along the arrows any further so there's a four there there's a four up here one of those three don't seem to know very much about four what about those squares then so they're three eight and nine aren't they yeah that that that's gorgeous right so the trick i tried to do with this square i can do with this square so what i'm saying is this is a 389 triple in box five where does that cell go in box five now if this was a three you couldn't put three at all in this box now if it was a nine you couldn't put nine in this box because it sees that whole triple so that has to be four Four lives in one of these squares at the bottom of column six. Do we? Ah, oh, we do. <laughs> Where's four in box three? It can't be in those two squares because of Sudoku. Well, because of Knight's move. Four is in one of these two cells. I haven't done a Knight's move puzzle for a while. I'm I'm feeling rusty. Two, four, and uh, s no, 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 no. Two, four, five. So that's not 2 by Sudoku. That's not 5 by Sudoku. Well, Knight's move in each case, I, I suppose I should clarify. And... Hmm, and now I'm stuck. Oh, it's going so well. Um, where should we look? We shall look at... Golly, I don't know. Um, no, I've still, I've still not got anything. What are the gaps up here? They're three, five, and seven, aren't they? Can we do anything better with these? Three, five, and seven. That's not seven. This one isn't five. Oh no, I was about to say this can't be three, but I've already managed somehow to remove a three from this square. That was using the triple, wasn't it? Um, ah, okay, so this square's gettable. But, yeah, this is a classic trick with Knight's Move Sudoku. One of those two cells there does contain the three in this box. So how could this be a three? If it was a three, it would see this one by Sudoku and that one by Knight's Move, and that won't work. So that's nine, that's three. Now this is beautiful because this nine sees those two squares in box five, so that's the nine. We get left with three and eight. Now, I'm desperately trying to see if something is poking in there to deal with that. Not seeing it. Can I get this one eight resolved? All of these funny ones aren't doing very much, are they? Um, oh, nearly. Nine is in one of two places in this box. 
it can't go here because it can't be on an arrow. If it's on an arrow, this would be at least a 10, and that would be too high. Um, two, three, four. Is it going to be... Is it this box somehow with the high digits? So, I mean, this box has to contain four, seven, eight, and nine. Now, what can we get rid of? We can get rid of nine from this square. We can also get rid of eight from this square because of the, it, that sees both of those digits. Actually, this square also sees both of those digits. That can't be eight. But this, this one is so remote from the world. Um, oh dear, okay. We might not be able to go go further with that. So what is it then? Is it one somehow? I mean, this when you get a domino like this, it is worth thinking about because... Oh yes, oh I see, no, no, okay, I'm not gonna do ones. I'm gonna do fives in this box. Yeah, okay, so when you see, um, I mean, the same point is relevant. This domino, removes both of its digits from this domino because if we put five in either of those it would prevent a five going on this arrow the same is true of one because of the knight's move constraint so what i want to ask is where is five in this box now by sudoku it's not in these three squares by sort of domino logic it's not in those two squares and by knight's move look it's not there so it is up here so in fact no it's even it's actually better than that I didn't see this one. <laughs> so I used the knight's move rather than Sudoku. So this is a five, six pair. This is a three now. That's going to do this sort of chocolate teapot triple that we've got going on in this box. That digit should be now very straightforward. That's a two. So there's a two right at the bottom of the grid. Look, this, t this can't be a two because of that cell and the knight's move constraint. Right. So has that improved our knowledge about the world? The weird thing is I'm not sure it has. Ah, uh, this can't be a four because no, then neither of these could be a four. So this is seven or nine. <laughs> it's, not, it's not good enough, you know. It really isn't. Oh, bobbins, what's going on? Um, I like this, though. I really do. Th oh, hang on. Here's a, here is a thought. Where's six in that box? Not there because of the domino trick. Not there because of a, something called Sudoku. And not there. So it's there. And it's on this arrow somewhere. Which is probably important, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Look, I've got it. It's not in the circle. Because if it's in the circle, how would you make the domino add up to six if you can't use five or four? It couldn't be four, two, and it couldn't be five, one. So it's not there. So it's on the arrow. So this is bigger. So that's seven, eight, or nine. And this is six combined with a one, two, or a three. But it's not combined with a two, so that's not an eight. So this is seven or nine. It's either six with one or six with three. Now, how are we going to work that out? That is an interesting question, and unfortunately, I don't know the answer. Um, how are we going to do this? Is there some, is there a nine or a seven seeing this cell? Seven is mildly restricted, actually, in this box. It's in one of those three positions. It's really close, isn't it? So if that couldn't be a 7, then it would knock 7 out of this square, and this would be 6, 3. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. Okay, let's, let's have a quick look at row 4, where I think we need 2, 3, 4, and 8 into the gaps. Oh, is that doing something? Two, three, four, and eight. That clearly can't be eight. 
That can't be two or four. Oh, oh gosh, there's a three eight pair. Sorry, I didn't see that. All right, so if there's a three, well, oh, it doesn't do very much. All it does is makes this a two four pair. Now, <laughs> can we do something with that? Is there some way that this is this two four pair is seeing a two or a four, or that three eight is it seeing something? I don't know. I'm not sure. Um. Oh, all right. Oh, good. I've got it. Right. It's not. It's not. Oh, I could have got this before. I just didn't see it. I just didn't see it. Right. Let, let's look at this box and ask where one is. I've sort of I haven't been able to do much with the ones, but I, I have now seen I can do something with the ones in this box. One is not here by Sudoku. There's a 1-5 pair there, which takes these squares out. And there's a domino here, which knocks those squares out. So one in this box is in one of two places. And that means, look, that one is on this arrow. Can't be here because we've ruled it out of here for very obvious reasons. So we've now actually knocked locked this to being a six and a one. So that's a seven, which knocks seven out of both of those squares. This is lovely. So that's going to be a seven. That has just taken away a pencil mark position for six. So six can go in as well. Um, five can go in. Five is looking at this one. One can go in. One and six go in. Here we go. Here we go. Um, so what's this 389 is it in this column 389 now what can we get rid of something we must be able to get rid of here three from that one that's not no that, that ah, that's not ideal four can't go there so no oh no it's still not it's still being recalcitrant you naughty little puzzle what about this row there's something oh seven can come out of this square and that square. Right. I can't see it. I still can't see it. Can I do better with my one? Oh yes, I've got a one here. That's seeing that square. So that's six and that's one. Right, so perhaps I, well, I could have already said this wasn't a one. That can't be a one. Um, it's nearly the case that you have to put one on this arrow, I'm noticing. But it's not perhaps certain. Golly, it's nearly certain. One can't go in. This one sees that square by night's move. So there's a one. The one is almost locked onto the arrow. Oh. Ah. Oh, that's beautiful. Right. Okay. This is important. There is a one on this arrow. And that's this is for a very unusual reason. What if there was no one on this arrow? Well, we can see from this column, two, four and five are not available to go on this arrow. So in fact, the minimum other digits you could use are three and six, aren't they? Which would just work because this could be a single digit total and be a nine. However, <laughs> The way I disproved six being on this arrow was I saw this six and I saw that six and I saw that meant that you couldn't put a six on here. What I could have done is said there's a six in the row. So there must be a one on here because it can't be three six even. That would have been easier, wouldn't it? So this is one and something. Well, what's the, what, what is the something? Because it's not three because one and three is four and I can't put four there. So it's one and at least seven. OK, so it's either one and seven or one and eight. And this square is an eight or a nine. I wonder if what that's trying to do is to tell us there's an eight. There is an eight somewhere here. Hmm. 
I'm not sure. Maybe that digit. Is that under more pressure than I think it is? No. Well, that or that one even. That can't be three, can it? Well, let's maybe look at that one. But this could be one again. No, it can't be one. We've proved it can't be one. Ra. Okay, so what's this digit? Yeah, it's not one, which is on the arrow. It's not two. It's not three, because if you put three here, you can't put three in either of those squares. It's not four, five, six by Sudoku. Can it? Oh, it can't be seven. I was about to say it's seven or nine. It can't be seven. Right. It's not eight because eight is on this arrow somewhere, either in the circle or on the arrow. So it is nine. That's nine. And therefore this is eight. That is beautiful. Good grief. Oh, and I wondered actually about this. I could see that you there was the possibility of getting a one seven. What looks almost like a deadly pattern. Now in a knight's move pu puzzle, this isn't deadly. Imagine there was no knight's move. It would be deadly then. In the sense that you, nothing about the internal logic of the puzzle would tell you which way round these ones and sevens went. There would be two solutions. But because, for example, this might... No, no, that can't be a one. Um, but let's say that was a one. It would disambiguate the order and therefore prove a unique uh, solution. So I think we're okay providing something reaches into one of these one seven pairs and disambiguates it. Um, now, okay, so in this column we need 3 and 6. Uh, that was, just, it just looks like it must be resolved and I can't see why. <laughs> so bad. Um, I can't see. Okay, that's, that's, oh, that, that's not done it, apparently. 8, 1, 7. So 7 is in one of those three squares in box 7. Something or other needs to sort out all this gubbins, doesn't it? <laughs> Where is it? I got that sorted out. I don't know. I'm going to attempt this row and this row, I think. Let's give these a go. So we've got one, three, four, eight into these squares. So let's see. Oh, no, hang on. I want to. Um, uh, what can we get rid of? We can get rid of three from that one. Four from this one using this square. Or that one, actually. Oh dear, oh dear, that was dreadful. That was absolutely dreadful. Three and four have to make an appearance in these squares in the row because this is neither of those digits. We know that's not three. So three is in one of those two. Four is in one of these two. Uh, that's, that's just... That's just terrible. <laughs> it's just terrible. Um, okay, let's... I, I don't think this is going to be any better. One, seven, eight, nine. We know that we can't put ones in these squares because that will, because of this domino. Is there some way that a high digit is looking into this? It's really strange. It's really strange. It's just, there's still something here. There's still some meat on this bone, Florian. What else have you managed to, to hide in here? No, what I was about to say is gibberish. Um, oh, two is nearly restricted in this column. Because two in this column is in one of those two cells, so we can use our trick to remove it from those two squares in column seven. So two is either exactly there or there. Now, can we do any better than that? Maybe, so maybe this is a column I should focus on. Two, four, eight, nine. That can't be nine, clearly. Uh, and it can't be two for the reasons we said. This can't be two for the reasons we said. This can't be eight. What about this one? Is that under any pressure at all from anything? 
this digit is going to go in one of those two squares because it can't go here. No, don't see it. Okay, let's try this column. <laughs> I'm sort of clutching at straws here. I'm sorry if you can see what I'm meant to be seeing, but this is this is the nature of of these Sudokus. They resist even our best intentions. Um, wow, that that didn't work at all, did it? Three and five have to find a home down here. And I know that's not five by dint of Sudoku. So five is down here. Three, I think, can be in all of those positions. Oh, look, there's a three looking at that square. There we go. Good. So that's eight. That's nine. That's no longer nine. That is three. Does that reach down? Yes, a little bit. So now I've got a two, four pair. Good. So now I've got a three, five pair. Good. Now, does it do anything, though? Oh, yeah, look, I've got a two, four pair here, so that makes that eight. Now I've got a two, four pair here, making this nine, nine. So nine is in one of those two squares. Can't be here because of knight's move. Constraining. Oh, so now that being a nine, that, make, that makes this a four and this an eight, which makes this a seven and this a nine. Okay, now we might be getting somewhere. That can't be 7 by dint of Sudoku. This can't be 9. This can't be 7. These can't be 8. And, <laughs> um, and what? Maybe other things too. Actually, I might look at this row. So I've got one, three, and six. once we deal with the two, four pair, I've got one, three, and six to think about in these squares, and that definitely can't be three. And that one doesn't see anything. No. <laughs> oh, I know what we could do. It doesn't help, but but I know. I mean, it does a bit. One in this row is definitely in this domino. One in this row is in that domino. So that's the two ones that we require in columns one and two, isn't it? So another question we could ask is where is the one in column three? It can't be here, can't be there. So it is in one of those two squares and wherever it goes, it's not in those squares, is it? So this is four or eight now, and this is three or four. Both of those feel like they're close to cracking. Um, Now, these two digits are the same by Sudoku. And what else? Can we do any better? Um, one, three. Oh, yeah, that's a naked single. Good grief. Look at the bottom of column three. It's by Sudoku. It's one, three, eight or nine. But in the row, it sees... It sees most of, oh, it's going to take away the three in the corner. It has to be three, three, five go in. Two, four pair here now. So this is five. Let's get rid of the corner pencil mark there. Okay, this is six now. So that's six, that's three. This is now one, six pair. Is that good? Um, maybe. Two, four, and seven in the bottom row. Let's put that in and see. So this is not two. And this three takes the... Th oh, that's good. Yeah, that takes the three out of there. Now by our earlier... Oh, I've got a one, eight pair as well. So this is four. This is three. This is not four. And I've got one, eight, nine. So this square here is eight or nine by Sudoku. It can't be one because of this. And something must be, must be resolving this now. He says somewhat desperately. Is this one seven still resisting? 
there's going to be a one or an eight or something you know just creeping in and dealing with all this and I just can't see where it is I still can't I'm st I am looking um, it's not these squares is it oh it is where's eight in this row well I hadn't seen that but it's a good question it can't be in this domino because of this eight, so it has to go there. So that's one, oops, one, that's nine, that's seven, that's eight. Now, has that done it? Okay, that puts four in the corner. That does this, that does that, that does that and that, and the twos and the fours start to unwind. This is one, this is eight. This one, ah, so that is leaning into this one seven pair, isn't it? So we have to unwind it in that order to not create a knight's move problem. This one then bounces over here and we get the one and the six. It's weird. So actually the ones are almost the last thing you get, even though they were one of the first pencil marks we were able to put into the grid. It is absolutely brilliant, this puzzle. That's a two, I think. There we go. What a puzzle that is. That's right. Whoa, 350 people have solved that already. Wow. Wow. Well, it's a worldie. It's an absolute worldie. Um, Florian, take a bow. The break-in is beautiful, but actually the, it's not just one thing in the break-in, is it? it? It sort of bounces backwards and forwards between these these boxes in the most remarkable way. I mean, I have done a lot of Arrow Sudoku in my life, so to be surprised is really, it's a very welcome and impressive thing you've done there, Florian. Absolutely brilliant. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.